Uh, gentlemen, the next fight here is we're all going to be on uh, the over here for that Taito Ivasa fight for Kyle and Maddie and I looking for the KO prop. Uh, we got uh, Mateus Gamrot against the hangman, Dan Hooker. Now we know who the crowd's rooting for. Uh, oh, look at the picture. So Dan is full blonde hmm. these days. Uh, plus 260 <laughs> plus 260 uh, for Dan Hooker here. Uh, you look at Gamrot's side here, minus 360. And look, Gamrot is a guy, I think we look in this division at at, at uh, buck 55 and say this could be a champion in waiting. We'll find out if that is actually true or not. Obviously had some hiccups along the way. Maybe the last chance hotel for Dan Hangman Hooker. Kyle, you're going with a guy who's got a reach advantage here. If he can keep the fight standing, he would have a shot. If he can't stop the takedowns, it could get dicey. It could get dicey, but I got to tell you, even when you watch Matus Gamrot's last fight with Rafael Dos Anjos, he takes him down 11 times in that fight. He was rocked, and Rafael Dos Anjos almost knocked him out in the second round. In 11 ta- with 11 takedowns and seven minutes of control time, he only landed 57 significant strikes. And this is a pattern for him. Second round knockout. Fazeev got hurt, by the way. He was going to lose that fight to Rafael Fazeev. In the second round, he had only landed this is seven minutes of fighting, 16 significant strikes. Uh, in the fight against Jalen Turner, 29 significant strikes, four takedowns, and a three-round decision win. In a three-round decision loss against Benil Dariush, he took him down four times. But he couldn't keep him down. He has a problem keeping these guys down, and he only landed 33 significant strikes. One thing we know about Dan Hooker, he's going to get taken down. We know that. But Dan Hooker is going to land the better strikes. The crowd's going to be behind him. We've seen this oh, a million times, especially with these judges. Every Everything that Dan Hooker does is going to be amplified by a 1,000 because of that crowd. Gamrot is wildly boring. He doesn't do anything with his takedowns. So I've got the volume edge, the striking edge, the bigger moment edge. I like Dan Hooker here by decision. I took it at plus 550. I just don't see the volume, the output, or the. I don't see where Matus Gamrot's going to get the edge here. His only knockout since, what, since 2021 is when Fazeev got hurt and he was going to lose that fight. Everything right, else has been boring, boring decision. Uh, yeah, give me, uh, give me Dan Hooker here. I had him against Jalen Turner the last fight. He landed 127 significant strikes. I think he can do that again in this one. He's going to keep getting up. Gamrock can't keep him down. Give me the underdog here and give me by decision at plus 550. Man, this thing goes all 15 minutes, and Kyle is going to be really live. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, if this thing can get yeah, there. Yeah, and but the Maddie, over two and a half is minus 265. So think about that. Right. They, they already have this price where it's probably hitting the cards. Why not in a greasy fight where you have a guy with low volume? Why not take the juicier number in my view? You know, Maddie, I see you smiling over there because I look at it too and I go, if Gamrot is going to be who I think we thought he was going to be, right? Like a uh, Sarukian type fighter here to, at a buck 55, he needs to be a little bit more dynamic when it comes to finishing, to Kyle's point. If he doesn't finish, we're going to be holding our breaths if you're on the Gamrot side here. But you think maybe this is when Gamrot kind of sh- shuts everybody up down there in Perth and says, all right, I'm not going to let it go to the cards. Oh, we're muted. Oh, we're muted. Unmute. I, I agree with Kyle yeah. that uh, Gamrot is not KO and Dan Hooker. But this guy knows and understands what the USC is doing these days. Like, you're allowed to grapple, but you need to be more entertaining. Like, if this dude wins a 30-27 boring decision, it's not going to help him at all. Like, yeah, he's going to get the win, but what is Dan Hooker ranked? Like, 11th or something? Like, he's, it's not going to help him to win a boring decision here. You know, this guy's grappling is so high level. You know, he out-wrestled, he out what, Armin Sarukian. Islam Makhachev made it look so easy against Dan Hooker. I think Dan Hooker is, like, bait of the week. Like, I think he's, like, the dog trap of the week for everyone out there. Everyone's like, oh, RDA caught Dan – or caught Gamrot. And I get all of that, but I think RDA has a better get-up game than Dan Hooker. Like, Dan Hooker could not get get up when Islam took him down. And I get that that's Islam. But Gamrot's right up there, you know, with, with Islam as far as wrestling. He's 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 right near his, you know, Islam's ability. So I, I just like Gamrot. I think, you know, I think the submission at five to one, I know he, he's more of a control guy than a finisher. But, you know, you go back, you look at the Jeremy C the Jeremy Stevens fight, you look at the Diego Ferreira fight, like and I think he's gonna have so much ground time, you know, an opportunity to find a sub. And if Dan Hooker is overly aggressive and gambles a little bit, 
I think Game Rock could lock something in. So I'm going to take the shot at 5 1 on the submission. Well, and again, I, I like what you've done there with the big favorite here to, to flip that around on the Gamrot side and look for that elusive finish because you're right. We've seen Dana White, man. He has been pissed off with a lot of these fights, Kyle. Like we talked about since UFC 300, where you're just yeah. not seeing finishes. Maybe it's the, the new gloves people are talking about with the KOs or the lack thereof. But Gamrot's going to have the opportunity to, to get the hangman down, not just control him on the ground, but he better look to finish or else, to Maddie's point, it's not going to be something that Dana White goes, yeah, coming out of Perth, let's give Gamrot a title shot. Like He, he needs right. to be impressive against a guy that's kind of built in to look impressive against because if it goes to the cards, I think Kyle's going to be very live, and that's the two angles here. We're going to take Matty, yeah. Matty's play here, Gamrot, to get this done via sub and look to finally get a stoppage here. And look at that nice plus money here on the Gamrot side. And Kyle, this is very interesting. Plus five dollars for Gamrot by sub, Hangman by decision plus five fifty. So you guys have shot found bet. a really good way. I want to shot bet it. I hate Matus Gamrot so much. I want to shot shot bet against him. We'll just go straight what? one to one. I won't even take the juice. Just How straight. About that, Maddie? Shot um, bet. Yeah. Shot shot Done. bet. Gam. And can I ask you guys something? Because you guys are you guys are real plugged in. I was hearing rumors that uh, some of the guys for UFC were backstage the last couple of events telling guys they want them to strike more. Now, mm. I, I don't know if that's accurate. That seems like a kind of a wild thing to do. And it, it almost feels like you're – it's almost like match fixing almost, right? Like you can't tell yeah. a wrestler, don't use your don't use your strengths. And st but is that yeah. happening? Have you heard anything about that? Is that actually happening backstage? I, I saw I – I talked about this with Gilbert on the Show Me the Money pod this past week. And we talked about the Carl Williams fight. Carl Williams usually would have shot against uh, against that guy in like the first minute of a fight, right? He didn't shoot till he was hurt in the second or third round. I think that – and there, there was a rumor on Twitter that, that exactly what Kyle just said uh, is, is accurate. And I think that – I think USC is saying, hey, you have to be excited. And Gilbert even talked about it. Like you can grapple, but you need to look for finishes and be excited – because if you're not trying to be excited in the UFC, we see what they'll do with Muhammad Kai and guys like that. Right. It, it, that's fascinating. And again, I hope that's not true. But if it is true, as Maddie's got some good intel there on the inside, um, that's that's a bad look. Like, look, I've, I've it'll help Dan place. Hooker. I'll tell you that. It helps it have, it, right. Because if they want to force Gamrot to go out there and strike, he's going to lose. You know, unless he yeah. like, wins that kind of shot. So. Well, yeah, I was see. watching Curtis Blades. You know, Curtis Blades when he's fighting Aspinall uh, a couple weeks ago, and I'm thinking. What are you doing trying to strike with this guy right away? Like, what is that all about? So I hope, because I've talked to Curtis about that in the past in our Chicago days, and he's like, I've got to be me. I'm a, I'm a grappler. I'm a wrestler. I can't get caught up in the hands game. And then all of a sudden, he's in the hands game with Tom Aspinall. We saw how that worked out. So if that's happening, that's not a good look, UFC. That's not a good look. You can't be telling your fighters, yes, you want to say, hey, look for finishes. That, that's different. But it can't be like you got to strike more like that. Right. I think we're, we're crossing some lines there for us, certainly yeah. in our community, I would think. Uh, but that's interesting. You guys have, have found a plus money here. Speaking of, well, I kind of hope it happens in the next fight. Okay.